Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. Here we have the last topic from chapter 7 of microwave engineering. The topic we have from the chapter that it is microwave transmission lines here. So in this particular chapter, we first of all understood a circuit model involving the lumped elements per unit length. The lumped elements were R, L, G and C. The corresponding SI measurement units were considered and we further have formulated the various parameters for the analysis of transmission of microwaves onto the transmission lines. Those were the reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient, standing wave and we have also used the Smith chart, a very popular graphical method to find the solutions corresponding to the microwave transmission line with a very quick answer there. The corresponding single stub matching and double stub matching techniques we have also addressed. Now this topic is intended to have the exposure for how exactly the practical transmission is made possible with the help of different kind of the transmission lines. So we initially consider that we have a coaxial transmission line and hence the topic name to have connection from one line to another line that is microwave coaxial connectors here. So let us see the details. So here we have the topic titled microwave coaxial connectors. So as this is the last video of seven chapter, I hope it is very, very clear to all of you that microwave is nothing but the electromagnetic wave with the frequency range of 1 gigahertz to that of 300 gigahertz here. Now, this is the some kind of energy at this particular specific frequency. And now we want to have this energy transmitted from one end to another location, we can say. Hence, microwave transmission lines we had been using here. If you talk about the coaxial transmission line, the coaxial transmission line usually have the structure as like a central core and it is surrounded by another conductive material. The central core at some more positive potential whereas the surrounding conductor is at comparative negative potential here and the transmission of the energy or we can say that the microwave will be having from one end of this coaxial transmission line to another end at some different position here. See the radius of the central conductor whereas the surrounding conductor is expected to have the uniformity throughout the length of this transmission line. Now when we work with this particular type of the transmission line, this is basically the wired medium and microwave that we talk about basically the electromagnetic wave is supposed to have the propagation into the wireless medium but when we have the transmission through a wired medium at certain higher frequencies with some possible radiations and losses we have finally the transmission up to certain length here up to certain distance we can say so when we have the high frequency operations When talking about the frequency, it comes to the wavelength also. So F is equal to C by lambda, the relationship we know that it is inversely proportional to that of the wavelength here. So one point should be very, very uh, important to be taken into the consideration that the average circumference, the average periphery of the coaxial cable must be limited to one wavelength, one wavelength denoted by lambda here. The purpose of doing such the limitation to the dimension of the coaxial cable is to have reduction. So I write here to reduce the effect of multimodal propagation. Also the limitation of dimension up to one 
wavelength that is one lambda for the coaxial cable is to make the elimination of erratic reflection coefficients also we have reduction into the power losses we have the reduction into the signal distortion here this is all due to if we have a conductor carrying certain current and if it is had having a specific length let us say small h here it is related to that of the wavelength that it can radiate through so generally while learning the modulation concept we approximate height of the antenna h to be of lambda by 4 here so we relate the wavelength of the microwave or the electromagnetic wave basically to be traveling over such a transmission line so to look out all these considerations it is very very necessary that whatever the microwave coaxial connectors will be there they will be intended to make reductions into the general type of the losses in terms of the radiation losses also we have so now we shall list out the seven types of microwave coaxial connectors and we shall be giving their information in very brief so very first of all the first type of the microwave coaxial connector is named by APC-3.5. So here the name APC stands for, here we have Amphenol Precision Connector. And here 3.5 refers to that of 3.5 mm millimeters to that of the dimensions here. So now the APC-3.5 is very popular for the repeatable type of the connections here. Whereas it has obtained very low value of we have VSWR, VSWR standing for the voltage standing wave ratio. Whereas this type of connector is specifically using the characteristic impedance value approximated to that of 50 ohms here and the frequency range that it works with is of up to 34 gigahertz here. So this is in the microwave range here. Now after APC-3.5 we shall discuss about the another type of the microwave coaxial connector. So the next connector is we have APC-7. So APC here again stands for we have Amphenol Precision Connector. and amphenol precision corrector now it is having the dimension 7 millimeters talking about the application and the use here this particular connector is also popular for the repeatable manner of connecting whereas we have again the value of the characteristic impedance with this connector to be of 50 ohm and this measurement corresponding to that of the characteristic impedance is very very accurate as compared to APC-3.5 connector here. Now talking about the VSWR here, VSWR or APC-7 is very very low or you can say in another words to be extremely of low value here now it can work with the range of frequencies right from 1.0 to up to 18 gigahertz so now we can conclude that with the rise into the dimension of the connector here earlier it was 3.5 millimeters now it is 7 millimeters the working range of the operative frequency has got reduced here 
for the previous connector we used to be operating up to the 34 gigahertz now it has approximately half after these two connectors we have the third one that has been abbreviated as bnc the bnc here stands for bayonet navy connector the bayonet navy connector bnc is working with the frequencies the frequencies of about 4 gigahertz so comparatively it is also working on to the low frequency values here whereas the characteristic impedance is variable in the range of 50 to here we have 75 ohms of characteristic impedance the frequencies under the 1 gigahertz are also made operative with the help of bnc connector here the next connector is abbreviated as SMA. Here SMA stands for we have sub miniature capital A. So the sub miniature capital A that is SMA connector is very seldom used and the operative frequency is up to 24 gigahertz and this is because of the higher order modes of operation when we talk about the electromagnetic wave propagation it does have the modes of propagation corresponding to a certain microwave transmission line here the next chapter we shall be addressing for the rectangular and then for the circular type of the waveguides and next to that we have the strip lines also so thereupon we shall be very well acquainted with the various types of the modes of lower order and the higher order for the specific transmission line so here the sma is specific to such type of higher order modes of operation for transmission of the microwave energy now let us discuss about the next type of the connector here the next type of the connector is abbreviated as smc here here smc stands for we have the long form that it is sub miniature capital c and now it has the characteristic impedance of the range of 50 ohms and in dimension it is smaller than that of the earlier connector sma here now this particular microwave coaxial connector is having the diameters up to 3.17 millimeter or 0 0.125 in inches also and the operative frequency range is up to 7 gigahertz of frequency value so next to smc we have the connector capital t n c here and this T and C stands for we have threaded navy connector. The threaded navy connector is operating up to the frequencies of 12 gigahertz here. And at last we have the seventh type of the connector called as type n so here type n n stands for again the navy here most of the microwave coaxial connectors that we are discussing so far were invented to work in the region or the time duration of the world war to there hence these all the military applications have been involved while giving the specific names to the connectors there now we have the operative frequency range of type N connector to be of 1 to 18 gigahertz of frequency whereas the characteristic impedance to match with the energy is of 50 to 75 ohms and the VSWR is extremely low and it has the value of 1.02 here. 
so as it is a ratio it does not have any measurement unit here so i hope this much is enough to address the microwave coaxial connectors so this was the last video from the chapter microwave transmission lines by the next chapter we start in the next video the microwave transmission with rectangular waveguides there we first of all will be addressing the topic for the parallel plate waveguide and then we shall proceed for the rectangular waveguide in those videos here so i hope you are definitely getting enjoyed for learning the concepts of microwave engineering for more information you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you